This video would not be possible without the help of AmericanAquariumProducts.com. Again, I'll have the link to the article in the description if you'd like to learn more. Thanks for watching Aquarium Tech today. Today I'm doing another video I've been wanting to get out for a very long time. Um, it's a problem that's been going on in aquatics for a while, but originally it wasn't necessarily a problem. Um, it's, it's just because you didn't have a lot of options back in the day when they started this, but watts per gallon. Ugh, that's like nails on a chalk chalkboard when I hear that. That is, that is such a bad way to measure light. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna call this video either. Watts per gallon or don't use it or something like that. But anyways, um, my streaming situation, just wanna get that out real quick. Um, uh, again, my internet sucks, so I can't stream and play games always at the same time. I've been trying to get on more, but, uh, you know, that's just how it goes. I just haven't been on a lot. But anyways, uh, some of the information I'm going to take here is, again, from AmericanAquariumProducts.com. They have an excellent article on this. Again, I'm going to put this in the description, maybe even put it down here. Um, and the reason for that is, because, I mean, really, you don't even need to read the article to know what I'm talking about here, but if you want to learn more and learn how the, all this actually works, um, I suggest checking the article out, very well written article. Anyways, um, watts per gallon. Originally, um, I believe it had some use, it originated prob probably, well, I'm not even sure, but probably like the 70s if I had to guess, maybe even earlier, or something like that. Um, and basically that was back in the day when you had two choices. You had metal halide or T12s, and that was it. And I think their efficiency is probably somewhere close. So, I mean, even though it's still not a good way, at least they were close together. But now, nowadays, I mean, you've got compact fluorescent, uh, T5, power compacts, T8s, T10s, T12s, LEDs, and on top of that, within their own categories, like T5s, different bulbs uh, have different efficiencies, different fixtures have different efficiencies, especially when you consider like, uh, like the reflector and, and the design that goes into them. Uh, there's a lot to consider just, just between bulbs, you know, just between the same brand of bulbs. And on top of that, I mean, when you use that rating to measure light, first off, watts per gallon, watts is a measurement of power, not light. So that's your first problem, is it's, it's not even a measurement of light. Um, like, I don't, the problem, I'm going to try to make this video short, but the problem is I don't even know where to begin with this. There's so many reasons you should not ever use the watts per gallon thing. Because uh, you're just transcending so many other more important measurements uh, that actually measure light. You're, I mean, you're completely forgetting about color temperature, uh, nanometer range, which is your spectrum, uh, lumens, lux, par, per. And per is more important than, important than par, but uh, I need to do a video on per. And uh, they talk about that in the article here on AmericanAquariumProducts.com. So I'm sure a lot of you, uh, especially that are doing reef tanks, you see all this stuff about par with all these with some of the higher end LEDs, all they talk about is par when per is really more important. But anyways, moving on, you're you're missing all that and just using power. Like it it blows my mind that people still use that. It's not even a measurement of light. And especially with the diversity that we have in the market now, and especially with LEDs, I mean holy crap, I've seen some LEDs that are one watt LEDs that like you know, can barely power my cell phone flash, you know, that are just, oh, the crappiest things. And then I've seen one watt ones that are like on the panoramas and stuff like that, that are, they're freaking amazing. They're like super intense LEDs. So just within their own categories alone, you're getting differences. And like I said, that's not even including, you know, like color temperature and all that other stuff. Because we really, when we're measuring light, generally when somebody asks, because see, the, the question can kind of vary here. Because if so, like for instance, if someone's not doing plants or corals and they're just asking how much light they need, well, first off, you really technically don't need light. The fish don't actually need the light. But when they ask about it, they're probably going to be asking about lumens, just how bright 
it is, okay? And lumens isn't the end-all be-all. Lumens is just literally visible light. It doesn't have anything to do necessarily with what plants or corals need. And that goes into per. Per, if, if you wanted to take one single rating to see, you know, measure lights against each other, it would it would be per. But you, see, I mean, you still have all these other things to consider. But that would, you know, that's kind of a cumulative uh, measurement of the useful radiation that comes from bulb or, or which bulb or light, whatever you're using. So that is a much more accurate way to do it. And with that being said, it's actually pretty hard to determine which light can be better for you. Um, one of the things you got to do is just experiment and try out and read reviews on stuff. You know, do, do a little research and, and see what's best for what. And luckily, nowadays in the market, you know, there, there's a lot of that out there. So you can definitely get some useful information. But, you know, choosing what you need using watts per gallon is just, ugh, I, I, I don't get it. Like, ugh. Like, like I said, even back in the day, it wasn't an accurate measurement because you had stuff like uh, internal reflectors in the bulbs. If any of you guys have seen that, they, they used to have you have to line up the bulb correctly in the fixture. And like I said, different color temperatures. And uh, of course, they had like the VHOs and the HO T12s too. Um, so again, it depends because just because you're using more wattage doesn't mean you're getting more light is basically what I'm saying. All right, that's that's the short and end of it. And then, like I said, when it comes to plants and corals, that doesn't even with more lumens or light, you know, that gets confused often. Um, it doesn't mean you're going to get more growth or it's better. There's so much else to consider. Um, I, I'm going to leave the video at that, and uh, I have a few other videos. I think I have some like talking about the nanometer range spectrum and. I might even have one for par. Maybe I'll link those down in the description too. But like I said, the, the American Aquarium Products article has everything on this if you want to learn more. And like I said, I'll probably do more videos about all these individual uh, measurements of actual light. So, Alright, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Thanks for tuning in.